This is the Computer Programming University. First step is to always smile because I believe learning should be fun. And today we're talking about the top 10 SQL or SQL questions that you might be asked on an interview. So you're interviewing for a job. One of the skills they're gonna test you on is gonna be SQL. Well, very likely they're gonna ask you some or all of these questions. So question number one, what is SQL? So SQL stands for Structured Query Language. Basically, it's a language that allows you to communicate with the database. Database stores the data and your way to access, manipulate, update, delete, pretty much interact with that database is through SQL. You write SQL queries using SQL, SQL. The next question is, what's the difference between union and union all? Now, union and union all are very similar, obviously, but there's a key distinction. Now, union all, I wanna start with that one because union all, unions all. So what are we talking about when we say union, first of all? So we have two structurally compatible tables, right? Table one, table two. With a union or union all, we're combining them, right? but we're combining them with different rules. Union all combines them all together, literally combining all together, right? Of the two tables. Now union has some exceptions. Union will omit duplicate records. So if you have a record in this table, that's also in that table, it's going to omit that and it's not gonna union those records. But every, anything that's unique, it's going to combine. So in the end, you're going to have a unique data set. The next question is, what are the differences between truncate and delete as far as the type of query? So truncate versus delete. Truncate is a DDL type of query. And using delete, that is a DDL. ML type of query. So truncate is data definition language and delete is data manipulation language. Truncate is also faster than delete. With delete, you can restore the data after deleting it, but with truncate, no such luck. The next question is, what is a database? What is a database? So a database is nothing more than a structured way for you to store data. So it's a way or an organized way of storing data where it's easy to access the data, manipulate the data, update the data. A good example of, or an analogy is think of a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet has a lot in common with a database fundamentally as far as a principle. Think of a spreadsheet where you have vertical columns and you have your rows, right? So your horizontal rows, your vertical columns. Now with a database, what you have are fields, right? And instead of columns, you have fields. And then instead of rows, you have records. Very, very similar. And then you also have the ability to sort of run reports and you know access the data. I wanna find out which stores have the most sales on electronics, right? I have a database of sales. I can find that information very quickly. I can sort of access the data in a lot of different ways. So let's talk about the different types of joins. So there are different types of joins in SQL. Do you know what they are? Do you remember what they are? There's different types of joins. What, what are they? Can you name the different types of joins? And then after you name them, can you explain the differences between the two between the the different join types so first of all let's name them you have inner join outer join left join right join there's also full join and cross join inner join is the default if you don't specify a specific type of join that's the type of join that you're gonna get left join you're gonna get all the rows from the left table and then only the matching rows from the right table combined into one. So I have a table over here. Let's say it has four rows. I'm gonna get all four rows. If it's a left join, I'll get all four rows of that in my merge table or my join table. 
Now, if I have another table on this side that has only one row that's unique, then only that one row is going to be part of the join, right? I get all of the left and the right will only be what's unique. And wherever you don't have matches, you'll have no. The right join will be the opposite, obviously. So right join, I have four rows. So I have two tables, one table here, one table here. And I know this is backwards. This is my right, this is your left. Um, but just listen to what I'm saying rather than look at what I'm doing. So if it's a right join, I'm gonna get everything from the right table will be joined, but from the left table, only the unique records will get joined. So if I only have one unique record, then I'm only gonna see that one here. Everything else will be null. A full join is like a combination of a left join and a right join. So with the left join, you get everything left, but only matches on the right. With the right join, you get everything right, but only matches on the left. With a full join, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a combined table which shows you all the unique records from the right table and all the unique records from the left table will be combined into one. Similar to a union, duplicate records will be excluded. With a cross join, you're going to take all the records from the right table and all the records from the left table and combine them together and this is basically going to give you the Cartesian product of these sets of rows. So this is the Cartesian product of these sets of rows, tables from the right and from the left. Now, a lot of people struggle with joins, so you probably want a little bit more clear explanation. And for that, I have a video. I'll put a link in the description. Go take a look at that and really understand what the different joins are. This is really a study tool. So the idea is you should already know these things and this is to practice and to refresh your memory. But if you don't already know what joins are, definitely take a look at my video in the description. The next question is what are tables and fields? What are tables and fields? So tables and fields are not necessarily two different things because a table contains fields for example. So a table contains fields and record, and a field is a component of a table. So let's talk about the structure of a table. So a table is broken down into fields, which is a set number of fields. When you define your database or your schema, you define how many fields your database has. So let's say customer name, address, phone number three fields. It can never be more than that. You can never insert a record into that table with more than three records. You can insert two, two fields rather. You can never insert more than three fields into a, into a table that has three fields. That's how you design the table, right? So you can insert a record which has three fields, two fields, or even one field. But four fields will be rejected because the table has been defined as having three fields. Now the records are, there's not really a limitation on that because a record is an entry into the database. So unless you restrict the size of the database in terms of how much data can be stored in the database, or you specifically set a, a record limit of some sort, then there is no real limit. So pretty much you have a, a table, you insert one record, which is one item. So let's say you have a customer's table. It's a bunch of customers in there. First customer, cost, first customer I put in there will be one record. Next customer, second record, right? Third customer, third record. Fourth customer, fourth record. And on and on and on and on. I can keep going and going and going, but the, the fields are fixed. Okay, so for this example, I'm gonna show you a table. So what we wanna do is we wanna swap values in a particular field. So this field sex has two possible values, M for male, F for female. Wherever you see male, make it female. Wherever you see female, make it male. That's, the, that's what I wanna do. How do you change these values? So there's again, only two choices. If you see one, change it to the other. If you see the other, change it to the other one, right? So the end result should look like this. 
So the end result should be female, male, female, right? So how would you write a query that would do that? Where you see M, make it F, where you see F, make it M. Think about that for a second, pause the video if you need, and then I'll show you how to do it. All right, so this is very easy to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this query. So basically what we wanna do is an up, whoop, let's make this black so we can actually see it. All right, let's try that again. Make this black, update salaries, set sex equals case sex when m then f else m end so basically what we did here is we're saying update i don't think i made any mistakes it looks good update salary so the table name is salary so update salary set sex so we're saying we want to change the sex value we're setting sex equals case and then we define the case we say sex right when m right so again we're setting the case we're setting sex right that's that's the thing we want to set sex to be a different value right so we're setting sex and the way we're setting it is with these cases so in case you see this do that in case you see something else do something else that's that's kind of the idea the way to think of it so i'm saying sex equals case sex when m so case so sex when m then f right so the sex when m will be f when m then f when m then f so when you see m make it f else now you think logically you make the opposite of that when f make m but that's unnecessary you can just say else m right because everything else will be an m there's only two conditions either it's going to be an m or it's going to be an f you already said what to do if it's an m if it's an m make it an f and the only else condition would be that it's an f the only else it's either m or f so if it's not an m it's definitely an f and then in the case of an f make it an m it may sound a little bit confusing but just think about it for a second take your time pause the video um but I think it's pretty much self-explanatory if you really, really think about it. Rewind the video, listen to what I just said again. I'll go through it one last time and then we'll move on. So we're updating salaries. We're setting the sex, right? That's what we want to do. We want to set the sex value. Okay, so what are the conditions? How are we setting the, the sex values? Well, case sex. So that's like you're saying um, the sex will be, right? Sex will be what? Well... The sex will be when M, then F. So when it's M, make it F. Otherwise, just make it M, right? All right, moving on. All right, so for the next question, I want you guys to take some acid. Who takes acid anyway? That's like back in the day. Um, so acid, that's an acronym. So atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability that's acid so what is a primary key what is a primary key so a primary key is basically a unique identifier for each record so for example if i had a database of people a primary key could be the social security field no two people will have the same social security number. So if I want to be very, very specific about which particular row I want to target, I can use the social security. Now, when you're defining the schema for the table, you will define the SSN. Let's say that's the name of the field for social security number. You can de define the SSN field as your primary key. Now, if you had a database of, say, orders, if you understand fix, you could use your client order ID every order has to have a unique client order id however there is one problem with that you will have multiple messages with the same client order id because every message about an existing order would have the same client order id unless there have been changes made to the order but that depends also on what the table stores if the table storing executions then every execution on the order will reference the same client order ID, so you can't use that as a primary key. 
But if you're using an orders table, since every order has to have a unique client order ID, that means every order will have only one row or will exist as a single record, then you can use client order ID as a uh, as a primary key in that instance because let's say you have an order that comes in and you get a hundred share execution on that order right so you have client order id one total executed 100. you have another execution come in now the the it's going to do an update on that record and now it's going to indicate 200 shares executed but the same client order id and you can keep filling the order filling the order filling the order and every time it's the same order so it'll be the same client order ID. So only one record will have that client order ID. But that again is an orders table, an executions table where those values will be repeated. That wouldn't work. The next question is how do you get rid of duplicate records or duplicate rows in a database? How do you get rid of duplicate records or rows? Now you can select unique records only by doing a select distinct. So you can do select distinct star from table name, right? Now using that, what you can do is you can select or rather you can create a new table as select distinct from the table with the duplicate records. So let's say the table of duplicate records is duplicate records table, right? So you can create table give a new table name, unique records. Let's say create table, unique records as, and then you say select distinct star from duplicate records, right? So you are creating a new table and you're feeding that table with the results of a select distinct query, which is giving you distinct records only. So now you have a new table created with only unique records. So now all you need to do is drop the table that had a duplicate record. So you drop that table and then you can now rename the new table that you created as the old name. So in the end, you will now have a table with the same name that you started with, but only with unique records. How do you get the top 100 rows from a database? So the top 100 rows from a database, what query do you use? So to get the top 100 queries or rows from a database, you're going to do select top 100 and then from whatever table, right? So the next question is what is a foreign key? What is a foreign key? We know what a primary key is, but what is a foreign key? Foreign key is a like a primary key but it's in another table. So let's say you have two tables that have certain things that relate, right? So you have a primary key in this table and that primary key can relate to a foreign key in another table. For example, in this table, the primary key could be social security number, right? And then in the next table, there could be a column called name, right? And that could be your foreign key because the social security number in table one is referring to a particular name of a person in table two. So name could be the foreign key and the primary key over here could be the social security number. Now keep in mind in this table, this table's local primary key could be social security number. This table's local primary key could be name. So name is primary here. Social security is primary here. Now from this table's perspective, when you're trying to relate the two tables together, name is a foreign key. What is an index? What is an index? So an index is a performing performance tuning method, which allows for faster access to your record. What are the three types of indexes? What are the three types of indexes? There are three types of indexes. You have a unique index, you have a clustered index, and you have a non-clustered index. Unique index, clustered index, a non-clustered index. So let's talk about the four relationships you have in databases. You have four relationships in databases. So the four basic relationships in a database are one to one, one to many, many to one, and the final one is self-referencing. So one to one, one to many, many to one, and then self-referencing. 
Those are the four types of relationships you have in databases. The next question is, what is a sub query? What is a sub query? So a sub query, for those of you Unix people, you can think of piping, you pipe something to another thing, right? So in that respect with, with, um, with a sub query, you have an outer query, which is your main query, and you have an inner query, which is your sub query. The sub query is always executed first, and then the output of the sub query is sent to the outer query, right? So if you need to sort of get a subset of data first, so I wanna get all of the states or something, which uh, begin with A or whatever it is, you wanna get uh, a certain subset of data and then do something with that subset of data. So let's first of all run the subquery, which gets us all the, you know, whatever that subset is, right? And then take that and send it into another query, which does something else. So speaking about subqueries, what are the two types of subqueries? You have a correlated subquery and you have a non-correlated subquery. You have a correlated subquery and a non-correlated subquery. So what is a stored procedure? What is a stored procedure? Stored procedure, for those of you that have programming experience, is like a function. A stored procedure is like a function. Now with a function in programming, you can have uh, different pieces of code that you combine as one element, and then you can utilize it as a group. So let's say, for example, you create a function that will get all will parse a log file get everything that begins with a then randomize every third row for example right so anytime i want to do that to a file rather than doing those two different commands or whatever the gr group of commands i just do the function right the function itself comes with all the different steps that it does so just by me saying um so let's say the function's called um cap file. I can name it whatever I want to, right? So the function is called cap file. So I can say cap file and then give it an argument of file A. Cap file, file A. And then by me doing that, it's going to get all the things begin with A and then randomize every other row. That's what the function does. Start procedure, same thing. So I can have a bunch of different um, SQL statements that I want to run. Um, I want to do you know, three different things, you know, select star from this, update that, blah, 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 right? But rather than doing those queries all the time, I can just run the stored procedure. The stored procedure is kind of like a storage of all those different things. So imagine that in a way, the stored procedure is like a recipe. So like you're baking a cake or something like that. The stored procedure has all the ingredients, right? So all I got to do is take the stored procedure, put it in the oven, and then hopefully a, a cake comes out. <laughs> That's the idea. So I want to do a whole bunch of things rather than doing those whole bunch of things. I just run the stored procedure, which will do those things for me. So it's in a way you can, you can think of it as like a, a, a SQL script, script being like a shell script or a Perl script. Okay, guys, I am up way too late. Uh, so I'm going to end this video. I think I did more than 10. I was supposed to only do 10. I gave you guys some bonuses, so you guys are welcome. And if you appreciate me being up way past my bedtime, it's three in the morning and I'm up doing videos, teaching you guys about SQL, helping you guys to get jobs, so you can get paid, so you can make that money. Um, so if you appreciate that, appreciate the hard work and dedication, go ahead and give this video a like. Very much appreciated. And everybody who watches this video, if this video helped you in any way, write a comment below. You can say TKS for thanks. You can say hi. You can say this is stupid. This is too long. You can say um, I like turtles. I really don't care. But I want every single person who watched this video, if you benefited from it, if it helped you in any way, go ahead and comment below and say something. Say anything. All right. This is the Computer Programming University. And these are some of the top or most popular SQL questions that you might be asked on an interview. Now, if you are in finance by any chance, I have an excellent course that is specifically designed for you to help you to get the job. So it's a course that helps you out in terms of if you are rusty with SQL and you need a refresher or you have no experience with SQL and you need to get into it very, very quickly and you're trying to get a job in finance. This course is 
perfectly for you. It's like a tailored suit. There's no other course that will be that specific to you, not just SQL, but SQL for finance and also specifically for someone looking for a job. So I gave you some job tips as well and some tips for your interview. So absolutely recommend you look in the description and take my SQL course for people looking for work in finance. This is the Computer Program University where learning is always fun. Thank you for watching and until the next episode. Figet, salut. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. All right, guys. Boom.